All right, North America. So a little earlier today, I, I did it. I, I decided to channel my inner Aaron Rodgers. I guess it was something I didn't realize I had. But I went to our master bedroom. Um, I, I kicked out all of the pets. Uh, I got the blackout shades functioning the way a blackout shade is supposed to function. And of course, I turned off all the lights there. I sat in darkness for 20 minutes and after 20 minutes, I wondered why would it take anybody five days to decide to take a $60 million contract from the New York football jet live and on tape from the heart of Silicon Valley. This is the disturbance NFL show hosted by Dave to now to the host who can't stop talking about players, coaches, teams, and the sometimes questionable moves that NFL GMs continue to make. Dave DeBaugh. Okay, North America, welcome to the uh, Disturbance NFL show. I am Dave DeBaugh, and we've got a great show for you today. If you haven't already subscribed to the show, please go ahead and hit that big red <laughs> subscribe button, and of course, like this video all right now that we've got the groveling out of the way uh I, you you know my opinions and thoughts on aaron Rodgers, the green bay packers and the, the new york football jets already we'll cover a little bit more of that on the back side uh today's video should be somewhere between four and six minutes in length it is entirely about the national football league free agency as it relates to quarterback moves so far in 2023. Now we've had a bunch of moves happen during the first five days of the NFL free agency. And I thought it would be fun to just sort of take a look at the quarterbacks as they've moved uh, about the country, so to speak. Now, uh, Nick Mullins went ahead and re-signed with my Minnesota Vikings. That's a deal about nothing. Baker Mayfield is uh, it got himself a, a nine, basically a nine million dollar contract to uh, to um, uh, steer the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneer ship into the ground. Look, this Tampa Bay Buccaneer team is going to be the definition of bad next season. Uh, so Baker Mayfield uh, gets the um, job at least. Um, to quarterback another football uh, team. The San Francisco 49ers have thrown out a lifeline <laughs> to, uh, to Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold is, is definitely, this is the last exit uh, that he could take in the National Football League at this point. He has gone to the quarterback whisperer in Kyle Shanahan. More on Kyle Shanahan and the quarterback whisperer later, but just look at what he did with Brock Purdy in five or six games last season. He made Brock Purdy look like a Pro Bowl quarterback and somebody you'd actually consider uh, being in the Hall of Fame someday if he played like that every single week. Mike White, if you remember back to last year, we had about 10 days of Mike White hysteria <laughs> in New York. And uh, Mike White has moved on from the New York Football Jets and is now the quarterback of the Miami Dolphins as a backup. Uh, Jacoby Prissett is a backup in Washington with the Commanders now. I guess he heard that uh, uh, that the Schneider family had moved all, all of their stuff out of their offices because there's a pending National Football League sale to somebody uh, who's going to take over the Washington Commanders. Now, if you haven't been following this story at all, my hope, which isn't going to happen, but my hope, so the team's going to sell for somewhere between five and $6 billion. But my hope is that um, Daniel Schneider is forced to sell to Jeff Bezos uh, for $7 billion. I just want to see Bezos throw some of his money around unnecessarily um, against somebody that uh, deserves, um, uh, that, that was just super bitter and wouldn't even allow Bezos to bid in the first place and won Daniel Schneider because of some petty things that Bezos's uh, newspaper that he owns actually published, which, by the way, were 100% accurate to begin with. 
That being said, I don't think Bezos is going to get the Washington Commanders this time around, but it would be fun to watch uh, that unfold for sure. Jared Stidham is with the Denver Broncos. Andy Dalton is a Carolina Panther continuing his long, strange Bill Walton-style journey minus the 420. Taylor Heineke is an Atlanta Falcon um, and uh, the big two uh, deals that have gone down in NFL free agency so far are Derek Carr uh, to the New Orleans Saints. And of course, Jimmy Garoppolo is now a Las Vegas Raider. As for Derek Carr and the fit in New Orleans, I think Derek Carr fits in really well with the New Orleans Saints. It's going to be fun to see how he plays on a team that might give him a little bit more freedom. Derek Carr is, is definitely one of those people that likes to follow the playbook. Uh, he doesn't uh, uh, handle improvisation as well as like a Jimmy Garoppolo does. Um, the, there, there are some nice weapons when healthy in New Orleans. So it should be a interesting uh, thing to see. Look, Look, Derek Carr's, you know, statistically can be a top 10 quarterback in the National Football League. Derek Carr is is a is a way better version of Kirk Cousins right now than Kirk Cousins is as Kirk Cousins starts to slide down the backside of Career Mountain. As for Jimmy Garoppolo being a Las Vegas Raider, um, look, Jimmy gets up, does his press conference. He's wearing he's wearing a really sharp black coat. Uh, he's got a black shirt underneath it, and he's got a Las Vegas Raider pen pendant on his on his uh, coat, which just was like it just looks so badass. It was unbelievable. Uh, if anybody deserves to be in Las Vegas uh, that can win over that city before he actually completes a single pass, it is Jimmy Garoppolo. the The question about Jimmy Garoppolo isn't whether or not he could succeed in Kyle Shanahan's offense. He proved that. Two NFC championships, one Super Bowl. Yes, he didn't win it, but he came very, very close to winning that Super Bowl. So Jimmy Garoppolo historically has won 70% of his games in the National Football League. Um, if he's able to keep that going with Josh McDaniels, then... Uh, uh, then that would be a, a minor miracle, if you know what I mean. The deal with Josh McDaniels isn't that we don't think he's a, he's a good quarterback's coach or a good offensive coordinator, but Kyle Shanahan was definitely a quarterback whisperer as it relates to Jimmy Garoppolo. And, of course, what he did with Brock Purdy was nothing short of fantastic this season as well. The thought is, is Josh McDaniels, Kyle Shanahan – or did Josh McDaniels really just have Tom Brady to coach? <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, I like Jimmy Garoppolo a lot. Uh, I think it would be great if he were able to find a way to get this Las Vegas Raider team into the um, playoffs this year. And I should note that this is the first time in a long time I've seen a quarterback who's going to be a starting quarterback in the National Football League sort of do the right thing for the team by not taking an exorbitant contract. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo's contract can best be described as something that was extraordinarily friendly for both the Raider defense and the Raider offense in terms of their ability to go out and get additional players under contract. That is something that we don't see a lot of quarterbacks in Jimmy Garoppolo's position, especially quarterbacks that can say, They've won 70 plus percent of the games that they've quarterbacked in the National Football League. Those are historical numbers that Garoppolo has put up. But once again, that was in Kyle Shanahan's offense. All right. So there is your National Football League uh, quarterback free agency frenzy. As for the endangered species in the NFL, the running back uh, position, we'll get into that next week. Uh, in terms of where the moves have been made and not made. Um, but I will say this, the running back should not be an endangered species in the National Football League. I still believe in the running game, unlike a lot of other people. I, I think that if you can get a running back that can average, you know, 1,000 to 1,200 yards a, 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 a season plus another three or 400 yards 
uh, in receptions, then you've got like 1,500 yards worth of production. And that, to me, if you can do that, that also opens up the, the passing game in a way um, that um, is, uh, is important. Look, not everybody's going to have Patrick Mahomes on their team. So, you know, a quarterback that doesn't need a running game. I mean, Patrick Mahomes needs a running game, but he doesn't need a running game. Most of the other mediocre quarterbacks in the National Football League would very much so benefit from a strong running game strategy. And I think more and more teams are going to fall back on that um, in the coming years. As for Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, I mean, it is a soap opera, isn't it? Uh, absolute so far. It's a Stephen A. Smith uh, episode on General Hospital. Um, so, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers comes out of the dark room after five days, uh, five, uh, four nights, five days in, in the dark room and says, I was 90% sure I was going to retire. Is <laughs> 90% sure that Aaron Rodgers was going to retire. Look, I'm married. I've got kids. They're a little older now, but if I told my wife I'm going into a dark room for five or six days to contemplate retirement, she would probably tell me just not to come back <laughs> is absolutely ridiculous. So it's the freedom that Aaron Rodgers has um, that affords him the ability, I guess, to to go find his inner self in this dark room. But if you're in a dark room for longer than 20 minutes, and this is something I tried earlier today, you'll be very clear on whatever it is you're thinking about within the first 10 minutes you don't need uh you don't need another five days to cleanse your soul and come out with the decision that um you've decided that you'd rather play than retire especially when there's 60 million dollars on the line let's be clear here i don't think aaron Rodgers necessarily wants to go put in all of the work that he used to put in uh back in the day I don't think Aaron Rodgers necessarily really wanted to play for the Jets, uh, but I think the Jets turned out to be the only people that actually made a phone call or a legitimate phone call in any way. So Aaron Rodgers, um, who I think is a, you know, he's a good guy and a good enough guy. Um, I mean, he's in that Trent Dilfer, <laughs> Brad Johnson category, isn't he? Is he a quarterback that have won one Super Bowl? <laughs> Look, I kid. Aaron Rodgers is one of the greatest quarterbacks you've ever seen um, uh, in the National Football League. You know, winning a Super Bowl is not everything. It's, it's certainly hard to do, and it's definitely a team effort um, that that comes down to it. But Tom Brady, in his career, when he needed to be clutch, was clutch. Aaron Rodgers, in his career, when he needed to be clutch, wasn't most of the time in the playoffs. And that's the difference. On on paper, if you watch these guys all play, you'd be like, hands down, Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback you've ever seen. Especially, um, especially if you just go back in the uh, hot tub time machine just 24 months ago. He's a phenomenal quarterback, so talented. It's just in those key games during the playoffs, and Aaron Rodgers would fall apart in a way Tom Brady wouldn't. That is the uh, the difference there. So uh, at some point in the next hour, <laughs> in the next day, I don't know, in the next uh, a week or in the next month, as this Green Bay Packer, New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers, uh, General Hospital episode with Stephen A. Smith continues to unfold in front of all of our eyes, eventually a deal will get done. All right, North America, thanks so much for tuning into the uh, uh, disturbance NFL show. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the rig big red button. And of course, uh, like this video, do check out our big sports website at disturbance dot live. When you have a chance for the disturbance NFL show, I'm Dave DeBaugh wishing you all a tremendous rest of your sports viewing week. The Disturbance is brought to you live and on tape from the heart of the Silicon Valley and is a production of the Mighty Rip Podcast Network. For more witty, 100% independent NFL and NBA sports coverage, check out our big sports website at disturbance.live.